So that's two spiders lurking in the workshop. That's two spiders lurking in the workshop. It's enough to give you a phobia, isn't it? Um, mind you, you need a bloody big glass, wouldn't you, to catch these ones in? <laughs> I'm sure we all know that trick, the glass and the, um, and the envelope, and then chuck them outside. But anyway, I can't do that, because uh, I've got to put a clutch in one and, and do a service on the other before they can be chucked outside. But anyway, that's what it's for. So, yeah, it's, as I say, prepping them up probably not for their um, Euro trips. So the red one, uh, as sort of alluding to the stuff that I was doing on that in, the, in, in last week's film, but yeah, so it's out of clutch basically. That, that was one of, the, one of the bigger jobs on it. So that's what we'll have a look at, what, what it took to do that. Um, we'll have a see about that. But first thing was, before you can even start doing one of these, I had to make a clutch alignment tool. So that's my clutch alignment tool. And this is basically, so you can put it in the back of the engine, that goes in the spigot bearing, which we'll have a look at that on an engine in a minute. And this bit carries the actual clutch plate itself. So I just turned that down. Now I did this for a V8 actually. Um, that was for a V8. Um, so yeah, so the idea is, you know, that goes, that, before you fit that, you can put this on and then you can put that into the spigot bearing on the back of the engine and then you can bolt it up and then it should have it all aligned. It should hold it in place but it probably wants a bit of finesse. This is probably needs that to be a bit, to turn that down a bit further. So it goes further into the spigot bearing. So it locates better. And this is slightly loose actually, I think, but you know, it's the one I made. Um, I'll, I'll make it tighter next time if I do, do, if we do with being a bit tighter. But anyway, it works. Uh, so I'll give you an idea on these V8s, roughly what you're dealing with, because they're very similar. So got two V8s here. Um, that's out of Ghibli, that's a 4.9 Ghibli engine. This is a 4.2 um, Mexico engine. But yeah, so basically the clutch is on the back here and that's what we do with this thing. So it will go into here effectively. So that's where your input shaft, this is effectively like a dummy input shaft out of a gearbox. So you can put it in there, it goes through the clutch, which was that bit. See, there's the cover, and then it goes into your spigot bearing, so it keeps it aligned when you undo it or do it up. We well, don't need it when you're undoing it because you're taking it off, but when you, before you fit it. Um, so that's what it's for, and I made this for a V8. I made that when I was working on a... Um, oh, what was I doing that one on? Um, it wasn't a Mexico. It was a... It wasn't an Indy. Uh, what's the other one? Yeah, I can't remember now, but I made it for a V8 anyway. Um, but it actually does do the six cylinders. The best thing though, back the old trick used to be to use an old input shaft out of the gearbox you're doing. So yeah, that's great. If you're doing a Ford Angler or something, you'd have a Ford Angler gearbox. You'd take the input shaft out of a, out of a scrap gearbox and use that, and that was brilliant. But I haven't got a scrap ZF gearbox for one of these, so I made a tool up. But yeah, I think that could do a bit more finesse, but that's effectively what you do. You can get these universal ones that all sort of bolt together that's sort of supposed to do any car, but I find that they actually like most universal tools, rather than doing any car, they do no bloody car. Don't fit on anything, but there you are. But anyway, let's have a look on a six cylinder, sort of see what we're doing, because that's what I did on the other one. But yeah, you can see how it works. Carl Army, that was it, a Carl Army. <laughs> said it's Friday afternoon, I can't think straight. Anyway, right. Right, so there's a six cylinder, it's a 
four litre. That's out the Maggioli coupe. Um, so yeah, so, so that goes in the spigot bearing, which is there, that's your spigot bearing. So that, that goes in there. So, so I think if I turn that down a bit further down, that will sit better. But that's effectively what that does. That goes in there, which, which effectively lines it up. And then you see what we're doing. So you, you can put your, you can check, your, you know, put your clutch in there, put that through there, and find the, the line it up with there. And then you, then that is centered. See, so it's where it would have to sit. Whereas if you try and do it without one of these, that will drop out. You know, it'll be all over the place. Now you can't get that in line. So that has got to be in line. So when we have putting the gearbox in, that's the input shaft of the gearbox. You see, these are both um, ZFs out of these Mistrals. That's your splines that goes in the clutch there. That's, that's the bit that goes into your spigot bearing, which is on the end of the crankshaft. So effectively, you know, you've got to pass that through there and then that's got to go into the spigot. And of course, if you've got this out of line, you never get that to line up. So you will really struggle. So that's what we're doing. That's the purposes of it. So effectively, this is replacing that. That's the same size as inner bit of those, you see, of the shaft, of the splines. So that's the same as that bit. And so you don't need to put splines and you don't have to have a spline, but it was a lovely trick if you had one of these the actual one to, to use as a proper clutch alignment tool but as I'm, you know these gearboxes are expensive these these go for a few thousand so i'm not scrapping one of these just for that i'll be better off making a better one of those if, if it comes to it which is what i'll probably do is finesse this you know this is sometimes it's you know as i say it's development you make one you know and then but now i know it will do both v8s and six cylinders it's worth you know it might be worth me making another one a better sort of version up seeing as i'm doing a few of these things now uh, not just Dino's, as you know, Maserati Mark some days. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes with a different type of clutch plate, you can get around the edges and you can feel where that would sit from the outside before you bolt it up. But on these you can't, you see, because that's, that's effectively, it's got to sit in the middle of that, you know, that pressure plate's got to sit in the middle of that cover plate. And you could feel in through here where, you know, you can feel the edge of them and you can feel between there and there where it sits. And obviously if you could feel that step there and then that step there, you'd think, oh, it's not in line. And you could do that, but you can't on these, partly because it's recessed in here and also because it hasn't got any cutouts in it. So you have to have an alignment tool. Without it, you can, you know, you really struggle. So I made that, as I say, for doing that Kalami, which I now remember that's what it was. Um, but yeah, now knowing it'll do all of them, I'll, um, I might finesse it and make a, a better version. Yeah, well, let's have a look at that red one, seeing as it's done. There's my darling little 600. <laughs> a new clutch for the red one. There we are. Now, this is the bit that the um, carbon runs on, which is this part. But you can see there's no carbon on the old one. See how it's worn away? So that's what it should look like. And then that runs on there. And I need to press the clutch. That pushes on these fingers, which is what pulls the pressure, pulls the um, plate away. That releases the 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 that's the plate freewheel. Look, that's it. So that carbon's worn out. You can see it's actually worn down into quite a lip there, isn't it? So that's it. Then that fits inside the bell housing here. Clips onto there. And then here's your, here's your actuator. That's what operates it. There's our gearbox. There we are. There's our flywheel. And I've checked the spigot bearing. Always check the spigot bearings that, that there's... Um, it feels good. That's all good. Let's get this greased up whilst we've got access to it. So, we'll be greasing these here. This shaft is hollow, and then it'll have cross drillings here and here and here, which will allow it to um, transfer into these pivot points, as it were. So, we use a bit of copper slip on here. And this is just normal LM grease, anyway. And there's it coming out. Now we'll pump some of this old grease out. 
So we've got some fresh in there, and that'll do. Uh, and I wipe all the excess up. The reason for doing this now, rather than in situ, is obviously I'll be pumping that grease out and it'll go everywhere inside the bell housing, wouldn't it? Um, and then end up caught up on the clutch and flying about everywhere. And then we'll end up with slipping clutch. Right, so that'll go around that way. You can try the other way. You see it ain't gonna fit. So that goes that way. Let's get the cover plate and I've also got a lineman tool. So that'll pop in there. I don't know, that'll help us keep it aligned. I mean it will it will need a bit of biasing. There's the whole assembly which is suitably heavy. There we go, put the alignment tool in. We've got to line our dowels up. Gonna be around the outside here. There you go. Now get some bolts in it before it falls off. So we're safe, we just gotta do it up. We can see this play on here. You have to get that sat about right. You know, you have to bias it up so it feels true and then do it up. Not the easiest thing to do, because it's a recessed flywheel, um, as in it's behind here, you can't get to it. And of course the cover plate goes all the way around, so there's nowhere to get in the side. So sometimes when they're open, you can feel in here and you can feel the position of the, of the, of the pressure plate and you can sort of move it around. Well, these you can't. So that's why I made this. So you have to get it just about right and then do it up. But we'll do that in a minute. So, I'm going to do them up, that's the next bit. You want to do it a bit at a time, because you don't want to warp anything. So it's still nice and free, the pressure plate. As it goes up, it will nip up, start to pull it on. So you see it's starting to, fit, starting to grab the plate. So at this stage, you want to make sure it feels, you know, feels like it's in the right place, that feels good. I've got a bar on the front of the engine so it won't rotate. I just wedge that against the chassis so that stops it turning. It should be fine. So, just go around them again just to make sure. Now you can sometimes do these up by sort of going over square. So you can sort of hold them here. And if you lock it right, you're not gonna turn the flywheel over, but I've got that in the way at the minute, so I'm gonna leave that. What we want to do is see, check that by eye if we can. Right, this is the S520 gearbox, which is um, fitted, I think the Aston Martins, uh, certainly the Mercedes, and obviously these Maseratis. Now it's not the same ZF gearbox that you find in the Fiat Dino, it's completely different. Uh, that was used on a lot of other stuff. Um, so these can be quite expensive actually. Anyway, here you go, that's it. Clean it up a bit. And we'll get this put back in. Got a new boot for there. Right, a little bit of copper grease on here, not too much, otherwise it would tend to fly off and end up in the clutch and we'll have a slipping clutch, but yeah, we want enough that it's um, the plate's not going to bind up on it. Right, and then we have a little smear of grease on the end here, where it goes in the spigot bearing. Again, we don't want too much, I'll wipe this off in a minute, get it down to how I'm sort of happy. Right, there we go. So we've got to get this in this way inside the car. So luckily, <laughs> having no roof makes life a little easier for climbing around in it. But it's heavy enough and it's all good enough. 
So yeah, that's the plan anyway. Right, rest there for a minute and then we'll climb in and see if we can get her in. Right, you see what we're trying to do? We're trying to get this in there. So that's where the input shaft's got to go into there, into the clutch. And the gearbox mounts up on here. And we've already built, bolted the bow housing to the back of the engine. Um, they do it this way because trying to get this bow housing in on here, it just won't fit between here, it's awkward. So yeah, that's the plan. Right, so now I've got to get it into the clutch. Got to get it. So I've got it just started in there, and now I've got to actually get it to physically start on the splines, and then into the spigot bearing, as it were, as well. Right, so we're starting to go. In. There we go. Now, if I pop it into gear, I can use the tail shaft just to turn it to see if we can start it. So. See what we're doing? Turning here, and we should be able to see if we can engage into the clutch itself. Well, there we are, it's in. So we just gotta do these bolts up. Pop these on, well nuts as it were, isn't it? Put these on. Now this one's awkward, because you can see how close it is to the casing. So you can't get a socket on that one. There you go, right, it's, it's finger tight up to there, which is the nylon bit, which is the nylon, which is the lock nut. But of course, after that, you can't do it up with your fingers. You need to do it up with a spanner or something. But you can see we ain't got a lot of room there. Can't do a lot in there at all, can we? See, so um, what I've got is I made a tool up. For, I think this is on the Dino's for being able to get the uh, oil pressure senders out the out the back of the um, back of the block behind the uh, carburetors and inlet manifold. Anyway, it's something I made up. So I'm an old spanner. There you go, old 19 mil spanner, and then put it on a socket, and then you can use it and wind it down like that. So that will do the job. So, you know, anything like this, if you've got an open crow's foot type setup, you can do it, but you see it's like a, it's almost like a miniature spanner. So here you go, I can sort of wind that around it. And once it gets tighter, I can put, you know, a, a ratchet on it to use it. I mean, obviously you only get a couple of turns on it. feels pretty tight so I might have got that where it needs to be now of course the other thing you could do here is replace them studs with allen bolts and then of course you'd be able to get on the heads of them and do them up if you were sort of having to get the box in and out quicker if you were it's not a race car or application something like that but anyway for this we'll do it the proper way do it how they did it in a factory so this next one's a bit more conventional in that we can get a ratchet on it although it's in a slightly awkward position as you can see so it has, the, it has the bracket for the clutch um, hydraulics on it, so it doesn't have a washer, that, that effectively becomes a washer. But yeah, you see it goes up in there, like that. If I can get it started, there we go, that's started. You can see there's a bit more room around it. That ain't such an issue, this one. And then what we can do, we get this flexi head one on it and then it gives us a bit of room to manoeuvre it doesn't it uh, top two to do and then we're in and secure okay well these top ones are a lot easier as you can see so you've got a washer, get that on there, and get our nut on there. 
can see this one's still tight though with the casing. Well, hopefully I'll get a socket on that one. Let's see. Yeah, it just fit the socket on that one. It's tight, you see there. And one for the other side. So now onto the gearbox mount. Get that in situ. So next up is gearbox mount, get that on. So that's our gearbox mount. That's the bobbins that go with it. We've got to bolt them on and then you get these little sleeve nuts go down through the back of the gearbox, which we'll have a look at. So you ought to make one of these for the silver car. So um, perhaps we'll, um, there's still a bit that was missing on that. Yeah, perhaps we'll have a look at some pictures of the one I made. But yeah, identical, looks just like that, lovely. Right, so yeah, get the bobbins in. They want to go in there like that. I want a washer on there. Spring washer or lock washer. And let's get the nut on there. Yeah. And that'll do. So you can't get the ring spring end in. Normally, obviously, you do up with the, with the ring spring, wouldn't you, rather than the open end. But obviously, this will have to suffice. Do. Now we get on the chassis, so it's cut the three bolts, do them, off we go. It's going to go up in there, isn't it, like that. So like that, and then these have got to go up through there, through the mounts in the back of the gearbox. If we can get it in there. Probably a bit of a struggle one-handed. Right, get the idea, it's got to go in there, and then I've got to pop that up into there. Bit too handy that one, it? so I've got to pop this up through here. I have to lift this one up a bit, doesn't it? No, I ain't gonna be able to do that. I have to get a lever on that. Right, what I'll do is use one of these props, and then hopefully that'll push up. So I'll push that up, and then hopefully that'll do it. Yeah, you see that allows me to flick that in there, that's fine. And I'll put the through bolts in. So yeah, they're good these actually, these stands. Because you've got a little lever on them, you can, you can push down and you can push things up with it. Okay. There. See, so that goes like that. And the bottom here, you've got this bit. What I can do, I'll push down on that. See, it raises it up. Good tool. I've got to get those sleeve nuts on the top, which might pay to see if I can reach through and do it here whilst I'm using that to lift it up and down. Yeah, that makes that easy. Right. Right, well, we're all started as ever. Start with your nuts and bolts before you do anything up, otherwise, you end up, you know, not being able to start the next one along, that type of thing. Okay, so get the sleeve nuts done up and see those. Or tube nuts, sometimes they're called. That. You can see the through bolts there and our mount, our cotton reel type mounts there. Okay, done. Prop shelf next. Get this prop back on. But what I'll do is I'll grease it up before I fit it. Whilst we've got a bit of room, because we can articulate it better when it's not bolted on the back of the gearbox. So.
Oh, there you go. That's a bit easier, isn't it? That's all right. There, I'll do that. Let's get this end lost rear. Right Right, well that lot started. I'll get the other end done now. Um, right, I'll do the gearbox end um, from inside the car. And it just makes life easier, doesn't it, than wrestling about under there. So, this is a sliding joint on the end of um, the gearbox here, you see. so. That will slide out to meet that. There you go. So that will do that. Now you see these are offset. So I have to go around one before that fits. Because the shape of the yoke. This is the yoke. That um, is different. So it makes these whole spaces different. So there you see it, we have to go round one before it fit, so that will do. That's it, so I can get this turned round and get this all started whilst we're up here in the air. Nice and easy, and then I'll do them all up and then do the other end up, obviously. And then we'll have, um, very nearly done then. Obviously I've got to put all the interior back together. That's a funny thing actually, because the, the, a lot of the Triumphs are like this, this way of doing it. And of course, um, a lot of the Triumphs are Michelotti designed Italian coach built, you know, Italian designers again. So um, it's sort of funny how it all dovetails in. And there we are. Road test. Right, well that's all right. Happy with that. And I would say good night, but it ain't for me. I've got to finish that yet. <laughs> got to finish the service on this one. And then I can say good night. But uh, you don't have to leave me to it. So I'll say good night to you lot. <laughs> so I can get on.